Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to take the next part of the container discussion and actually install Docker, do a few tests on it, kind of get a little bit familiar with the command structure, but right after this. <music> So let's get started by taking a look at some of the documentation that comes with Docker so we understand what we need to do to get started. And that is, uh, you'll need to go to HTTPS dockers, or docs.docker.com in order to be able to <clears throat> get to the documentation you need. And we'll, we'll go down here. If you wanted to install it from the repository, you could do that here, or you could just go to the Get Started steps. And <clears throat> they'll give you some information about you know getting started with the different things in here and what we really want to do is start with the get uh, get docker version of this so I could have done that the other way but uh, there's a lot of documentation in here just a lot so we're going to be using the community edition today uh, to do this which is the open source version or the Moby project and we're going to choose Linux, and we're going to be installing this on Ubuntu. And the first thing it tells you is kind of some general requirements about what version of Ubuntu you need. Uh, it does the same with all these others as well. The reason I'm not using Fedora is because, well, I'll just show you. The requirement currently doesn't support version 30, and so I, I don't think I'll do that. <laughs> I don't want to go backwards. Uh, on my versions. I'm running 30. So the first thing you want to do is to clean out any old Docker installations you might have. Get all that cleaned out so you don't run into conflicts between the versions. And then what you'll want to do is come down and start to prep your system. Uh, I have already done these steps up until the point where we're going to install the packages, so I'm just going to walk you through this. Uh, uh, and uh, the steps aren't all that difficult so make sure your system is up to date and then you'll need these packages in order to actually install the docker packages and you'll need of course uh, the apt transport you'll need the certs you'll need curl you'll need uh, gnu pg and you'll also need the software properties common which is a build environment uh, so if you're going to create your own docker images you're obviously going to need that in order to do it uh, the next thing is you'll want to bring down the key, the, the GPG key, and add that to the, uh, the the keys location in APT, under the APT directory in Etsy. Uh, at that point, you're ready to go check that key, and if you get this as the answer, you're good to go. Uh, you've got the, uh, the most, you have a valid version of the uh, repository, so we can go ahead and add that. Uh, to our list of APT repositories and then uh, this is where we will pick it up and that is to make sure that uh, we've got the latest uh, packages downloaded into our APT cache. So let me slip over to a uh, to a terminal window and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, we're all good there. And uh, we're going to be installing Docker CE, the command line interface, and we'll need container d.io, which is the runtime. I seem to be having a problem with my R key the, lately. Yeah. Just checking to make sure I. Sp Docker CE. Oh, it's dot. That'll probably work a lot better. <laughs> this won't take very long. And so at this point, we should see Docker up and running. Uh, at, at this point, what I like to do is 
is add my user account to the Docker group. Uh, and the reason that you do that is that you'll notice this is running as root. So in order to communicate with Docker, you would have to put a sudo in front of all the Docker CLI commands. And we don't really want to do that. So uh, I would add myself to the group. Now I've already done that. We can check. You would then add yourself to the group, log out, log back in in order for that, that group to get picked up. And so at this point, I should be able to do a Docker, let's do a Docker version, just to make sure that we're working good. And it looks like we are. We're running 1903.1, which is the latest one that I know of. And it also gives me all the, the, uh, the uh, versions for like container D and run C and, and all that lovely stuff. Um, the other thing I, I want to do is maybe I want to do a a list of commands to start out with. Uh, so these are it does a lot of stuff. You can this same command CLI is used to construct. And so we talked a little bit last time in the other video about what an image was and what a container was. So if you don't know what those are, you might want to go back to the first video and review that. Uh, but it, you can build uh, images in with this command line utility. You can download images from, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, from the Docker Hub that somebody else has built. You can then run those images in, as a container, uh, and then you can manage those containers to uh, stop them, pause them, uh, and so forth. So. Um, Swarm, we're not going to get into. That's an advanced Docker topic. Uh, we might do a video on that one later, but uh, basically that's a method of, of, uh, of doing two things, spreading the load around <laughs> to a lot of different servers and also giving yourself some failover capability in the event that one of your containers uh, dies. There's better ways to do that today, although Swarm does have a really several good use cases for it. So. Uh, I might cover a video on that one in the future. Um, it's, it just takes a little bit longer to set up, and so we'll stay with the basics first. So let's go back to the browser for a minute. And we'll go over to Docker Hub. Let me, uh, let me just close off some of these, and we'll do a search on Docker Hub. So we want the Docker Hub is the place where you can pick up repositories or you can store your own. Uh, I'm logged in, so it's going to take me to my repository first, but that's not really what we're interested in. What we really want to do is to come over here. So let's let's do a search for Linux, and a couple things you're going to notice is you know it gives you the name of the of the image kind of tells you how long or how old that image is so this one's been updated fairly recently uh, and then it gives you some information general information about what it is it tells you you can run in a container it runs under linux uh, supports arm 64 or arm 32 also x86 of course ibm uh, z series which is their mainframe and then PowerPC, which is their AIX uh, machines, and then 386 and so forth. Uh, you'll notice there's a tag here for official image. That is a Docker official image. So you can rest assured that has been checked and has been signed. Uh, so you know it's free of any kind of vulnerability, any malware, or it has, uh, has at least been tested for vulnerabilities uh, within it. Uh, there's also some other ones like Alpine. That is uh, used to be the default container for uh, uh, Docker. It probably still is. It's a very thin, very small, uh, tight version of uh, Linux. And then there's Debian. There's also, if you're deploying to Amazon Cloud, there's Oracle. Photon, which is uh, VMware's default OS. Clear Linux. Crux, which is another lightweight distribution that's used uh, can be used as the uh, build platform and then alt and so forth. Uh, if you, one thing I should show you if you 
want to start with a uh, with a null container. Uh, a null container is it's empty, totally empty. Uh, you can you can build this up yourself uh, from a tarball, and so uh, you can deploy this one, and it it doesn't have anything in it at all. It, it has just enough just enough information to uh, to to uh, get it installed into the images repository, and then. You'll notice down here they're they're showing you can copy over the hello program and so forth, or whatever application you want into that container, and then when it runs, it's gonna it's gonna do this this step right here, which is to execute the command. But so and then if you go look at Debian, Debian has a scratch build, and they actually download a tarball into that uh, into that image repository. So if you wanted to start with one of your own, you could do that. I just thought I'd throw that out there and uh, let you know that. So uh, what we're interested in right now is just a test to see um, if our Docker containers are working. So this is the official, uh, <laughs> the official hello world and making sure that everything works fine. And so let's go back to Let's go back to the terminal window and we'll run that. Now I could do I could do this. I could do a pull on hello world and then that would just bring it down as a into the images repository it wouldn't start it. But there's a shortcut where I can just do a run on it. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to see if it's in my local images repository. It's not going to find it, so it's going to download it. Uh, it's going to do a pull request from uh, the uh, re from the uh, Docker Hub. It's going to create that, and then it's going to create a container, and then it's going to run it. And so it did, and it looks like everything is is okay. So. We should be able to look and see what images we now have, and we have one. Uh, you'll notice that it has the name that I pulled. So this is the repository name. It's the latest version, which is the tag. It has an image ID here, and then it tells you how old that image is. It's eight months old on the, uh, on the repository, and then how much space it's taking on disk. So these are true containers. This is only containing enough information, which in this case is just the Hello World program, and uh, it is using my operating system that is hosting the Docker runtime. Uh, so yeah, it's very small. If I, I can also do, oh, let's let's go back to, uh, let's go back to the browser for a moment. I don't want to get ahead of myself. That's a bad thing. So let's go and look at Ubuntu here for a minute. So if we're looking in here uh, at the Ubuntu. Uh, uh, one, we, all this information is the same uh, as what we saw on the outside. So we'll notice there's some versions here. And if I did a Ubuntu pull using this command right here, it's going to pull the latest, which is 18.04, which is the long-term release. But if I wanted, let's say, 19.04, I would have to pass it a tag. So uh, let's go back. So if I did a Docker run, and there's a couple of things that we can do here. Let me, uh, if you type in help after the name of the command, it'll show you the options that go with it. So there are two things I want. One is a dash I, which says to keep standard input open. In other words, keep my, my session attached to the, to the actual uh, container. And then the other thing I want is a teletype. So that I actually, this gets passed to the uh, Ubuntu uh, operating system and it says, oh, this is the terminal you're coming in on. And so it allows me to interact with that. It's not enough to just attach yourself to a container. You also have to, you know, follow the rules of, of uh, Linux as well. So we're going to do a Docker run IT, which is the interactive terminal. Now, if I just left it like that, I'm going to get 1804. But what if I want, let me make sure my tag is right, 1904, correct. OK, so and then we'll do, I want to run uh, bash. So now it should bring down Ubuntu 1904. And then it, it, it actually started the session, and it's, 
uh, pushed my terminal into it. So right now, I am running Ubuntu. I'm running 500-25. Yes, and it is it is uh, running 1904. So uh, that's what I wanted. And uh, uh, if I again, if I had just left that default with no tag on it, then it would have picked up 1804, which is fine too. Just just be aware that that's how it works. If I exit this. Since this is the only session running, well, actually, I didn't tell it to run any sessions. I just said, as soon as somebody exits, kill the container because I didn't give it a minus D. So this is going to kill the container. So let's do the next Docker command, which is Docker container, not container. And then we'll do a list. This is the PS should give you the list of the uh, of the containers that are currently running and we don't have any now I could do a help and see what options I have so I can look at the ones that are not that are running but also the ones that aren't so let's do that and I see there's two here uh, there's one for the Ubuntu and it verifies at 1904 the command is bash and then it exited and this name is assigned, and this is the container name. This is the container ID. You can use either one of those to manage the container. This one is generated for you automatically unless you specify a dash dash name at the time that you run it. So you can assign your own name to the container uh, if that makes sense to you, or you can let it default to these rather silly uh, names that Docker generates. Um, the other thing we can do is um, I can uh, I can look at some other commands like system, and I have a, several things I can do. One is the D up. Let's do that one. And this should tell me how much space that my images are taken, and I have two, and it's 69.97 megabyte. How much space my containers are taking? It's about 36 bytes, not not a, not a whole lot. So uh, it is borrowing the image to execute, and then these are just pointers to the runtime. I think that's how it works. And um, let's see what on my list here of things to look at. We've done a run. Which automatically does a pull. Let's do it. Let's look at RM and RMI. Now I don't have anything running. So let's do, let's check and see what we can do with images. So I can do all. Oh, if you just do a quiet, it just gives you the ID, but you don't know which one it goes to. Uh, it will be, of course, in the same order that it listed it above. But if, if you know, if you had one in here, that would that would be probably better. But I don't find this very useful because if you have a, if you have 30 or 40 Docker images installed, then you don't know which one really goes with which, unless your memory is really good. So I think what I'm going to do is stop here today, and uh, and the next time we come back, we'll start looking at kind of a, a little bit more advanced stuff. We'll show. Uh, show you how to do an actual build we'll do, and we'll do a little bit more with management and I might get into Portainer a little bit uh, because the, the management of Docker is through the command line on the community edition. So if you want to have a, a graphical user interface and you want to manage multiple Docker hosts and uh, maybe you want to set up uh, some special cases, you can do that through Portainer. So we'll talk about that next time, uh, next time as well. Hope you enjoyed this today. If you did, uh, please leave a comment below and like and subscribe and all that stuff. Hope to see you again real soon and bye for now.